Hi, I'm Mark Logan, welcome to Academy, and today we're kind of following on from members' questions. Uh, one of them was kind of setting up a pro studio and what kind of equipment, the basic kind of setup and so on with it and things really. Obviously, it's all budget based and what you've got uh, is what you have and you just kind of live to work with it. And then obviously, as the jobs go by, you start to actually buy more and more equipment uh, to do with a specific job. You invest into it with the profit or you basically hire in whichever is the best for you. As a uh, kind of commercial photographer that was also a, por a portrait photographer, uh, we used to have commercial kit and we used to have portrait kit. So I'm just going to talk about the commercial studio for a minute, if that's okay with you. So as far as that's concerned, especially when we're setting up a studio to work in all, all the time, the kind of the equipment that you're going to need is going to be probably not as much as you may think it is in the commercial scale. Uh, but we're going to need a minimum of four lights, if possible six. Uh, and then we're going to need a variety of soft bo boxes. We're going to need a variety of accessories to control and shape the light. And then we're going to need a variety of backdrops uh, to kind of uh, give us the correct effect that we're going to. I'll walk through you all these now in a minute, as well as some kind of budgets for you to kind of apply to. Um, but as far as the kind of the uh, setting up is concerned, it is going to be your big investment. Uh, if you're going to be a location uh, commercial photographer, you're probably going to be a, a photographer with a bag. So in other words, you're just going to kind of travel and you're going to be either speed light photographer or portable flash like Ellen Crom's, uh, you know, portable kind of equipment or whatever it be. Right. So uh, let's talk in, in structure. Okay. Camera wise, doesn't matter if you're Canon, your Nikon, your Sony, whatever it is, whatever's right for you, but you're going to need probably a medium zoom lens, a long zoom lens, and some form of prime. Depends if you're poor portraiture. If you're a product photographer, you're going to need a macro lens, but that's really down to you. I would definitely suggest into some form of a studio stand or a heavy duty tripod, so the camera is going to be fixed off, and basically it's going to be in place all the time. And if you're using medium kind of format, in other words, more of like the Hasselblads of the world, then obviously you're going to need a more heavy duty studio stand. If you are using the likes of uh, uh, the old plate, as it were, 54108, then obviously you're going to need to uh, have a much solider studio stand. And that's where the big investment really comes into. But we'll kind of leave that for another film. So as far as this element is concerned, that's pretty much done. I would say a studio stand is going to cost you anything from about 500 quid to about two and a half grand. Uh, a studio stand is like a lens. You buy it once, you buy it forever, you use it forever, you'll hardly ever change it. So um, I would tend to, as a commercial, I would actually buy one that goes to around about seven to eight feet tall if your studio, uh, studio height allows, um, because you're going to guarantee at some, some stage be working on a ladder, shooting down on a product or whatever it would be, and you want to be able to actually get that high. As far as the uh, triggering of all the light is concerned, uh, basically, um, if you're investing into Elinchrom, pretty much everything is run from the sky, uh, the sky ports. So I can basically tell different groups, different channels to fire at different times of the shoot and things really. So again, that's really down to um, what you're kind of uh, running with. Um, as far as tethering is concerned, I absolutely, you need to tether and you'll need to actually tether with something that is fast and reliable. That's why we use tether uh, tools all the time. That's the little orange cables that you see all around the place. And as far as uh, a kind of a shooting to kind of location is concerned, you're gonna be photographing um, to a computer probably rather than a laptop. You're gonna have a quality screen rather than a big television that you've got here um, because you need to obviously calibrate and look at color in a correct way and things really. So we haven't got to what's in the studio space yet of you, you know? Um, but those are kind of gonna be big investments and they're gonna be probably some of the most expensive ones that you make. Lighting wise and things really, I would definitely go for more the pro heads than the kind of the pro-am heads. So things like the pro ELCs that you see all over the studio are kind of monoblocks. In other words, all the power is within the head 
rather than actually a power pack where it basically all the technology is in the, the kind of what sits on the floor and then basically the little head is actually what's up in the sky. You'll often see commercial photographers use um, the kind of the power pack with long cables to the head because basically they want to have all the adjustments down on the floor and not make all the adjustments up in the sky. One of the great things about Elencrom, whether it's using the sky, uh, the sky port triggers or an app, we can kind of control the actual light, what it's doing and so on with it. As I said, you're going to probably need a minimum of four heads, if, if not six. Uh, if budget allows, I would definitely get six all of the same head, uh, like the ELC 500s or 1000s. Um, basically, wh whatever you put in front of a flash is going to diffuse the flash and lose you power. And as most of the time you're going to be using either very, very harsh light or very, very soft light, you want a, a piece of equipment that can be minimized in power and you want to be maximized in power. So the ELC th th thousands will, will be running like a Ferrari. So in other words, I can instantly rev it up and shoot down the road at 100 miles an hour if the police allowed us to, of course. Um, otherwise, what's the point of buying a Ferrari, a Ferrari and doing 20 miles an hour? Uh, there's just no point to me except to looking cool. And when you're an old fat kid like I am, nothing you put on or do or sit in makes you look cooler than you are in real life. So we'll forget that. Um, there are times and exceptions to buy kit that is kind of so out there. You go, why would I invest into that? And, and little things, in fact, like the, I talk about the, um, d -Lite 1, in fact, quite a lot. These are amateur entry-level heads, uh, but they basically um, allow us to uh, pretty much um, work with a light that can go on a stand and be kind of held for a long time and kind of give us all the technology that I need. So these are great little heads, especially if uh, you use them like we, we do, as little kind of kick lights or if you want to kind of hand hold it um, even just kind of coming off stand and if you see kind of some of the fashion photography that we do uh, kind of a little bit more editorial some, sometimes you'll just happen to see either me or an assist assistant uh, holding that head as well with it and things really so uh, again it's not always about buying the Ferrari it's about buying the, the right thing for the job so I've got uh, in studio as we're seeing now we've got four ELC heads um, as far as the soft boxes are concerned, um, you need variety in size really, that's, that's kind of the main thing. You're going to see everything in here from a strip box just over in the top, we've got other strip boxes with kind of grids on, egg, egg, egg crates to control the light a little bit more. Um, I've got what's not in shot, in fact, it's a very, very big soft box um, and that basically allows me to kind of give a big, big, big soft light uh, if, if I'm photographing for fashion or couples or whatever it would be. Um, and then we've got kind of different shaped lights. So you're going to have like round like we're seeing here again with an egg, egg crate. Remember when we talk about an egg crate, this is basically the, the kind of the little um, mesh that goes onto the front that can be either uh, taken off yeah, or added to and things really. This is going to allow the light uh, to be controlled. In, so it doesn't spill or feather much. When we talk about soft light as a rule, uh, we, we, we usually talk about not having such a direction to the light, but often kind of feather it. Well, we can't feather a light with an egg crate on really. So uh, we talk about the strip. Then there's kind of speciality boxes like the Deep Opter up here. And we've just done a, a kind of a film on my one light editorial with kind of white paper. Um, basically the one light and things really and this is my kind of go my go-to light up here and things really um, obviously they're just put in position for you to get an idea of the space that you need as well we'll work we're working on a five meter wall and then a four meter wall across here and things really to uh, kind of give you an idea of the space that we're working in just here for a second um, other control of light um, just like we saw with the egg crates let me just switch that off a minute, um, will be um, kind of the, the kind of the um, <clears throat> meshes, grids, I was trying to find the word then, grid, yeah, uh, a grid, uh, and basically this does exactly the same as the kind of the, 
um, egg crates is concerned, it controls the light to go in an angle. And you can see that, it's because when I look through it, you can see my face. But if I turn it, it blocks my face, okay? So that does the same with light. As you turn the light, the light can't spread. So it does control it in a very, very direct kind of source. But like um, I was saying to you, um, we need basically things that are gonna make the job easy. Me and my age and everything else, it means pretty much most of the lighting stands that we use are on wheels and wheels that can be locked. Um, you're seeing two kind of main wheelie stands here. Both are ad additives to the actual studio stand itself. Um, this is just kind of one that bolts onto each uh, uh, light, uh, uh, sorry, the stand leg. Whereas this is an auto do dolly, which is my preferred kind of um, function really because quickly I can kind of just lock it off and it's pretty much just solid to the ground then at that point. In, in the next kind of breath, just pressing it up, it's gonna move around the actual set without any trouble. Uh, again, a little bit of, whoop, let's turn it around the other way, Mark. A little bit of a kind of um, uh, an expensive add-on, add, add but if it saves you back and allows you to work quicker, and, you know, setting the, the studio up at the end of the day for the next day is something you've got to get into the habit to. Um, and I always kind of refer to it as seeing kind of a, an old-fashioned shed where you see a hammer and you see a painting of a hammer where it belongs, yeah? And a spanner and a screwdriver and an axe and whatever it is. And I like a studio to work in that way if possible as well. And when you're working in small spaces, everything's got to have a home. And, and often... Uh, in a commercial studio, uh, studio uh, you'll see a kit room where basically everything is stored off in to make it nice and easy. So you go to the cupboard to bring things out instead of actually just leaving everything around, around the place. It's a very lazy studio where kind of you've got stands that don't need to be in the space. Uh, and Brandon, our video guy, is smiling at this point because we just discussed about ex extra stands in set for no reason. Um, anyway, so uh, we've talked about the kind of the stands, we've talked about the lights, we've talked about the accessories. Um, as far as backgrounds are concerned, uh, I definitely want a big white wall. You know that already. This is a five meter white wall. Nothing's allowed to be screwed into it. It's as high as we could physically get it, and it's got a beautiful finish as far as a plaster is concerned. So if I need that mass, massive white, I've got it there already, and I can basically use a white vinyl or a paper on the floor to lap up to kind of give me a full five meter, almost cove, without having a cove in studio with it. As far as the background's concerned, the other things that I need is a black. Uh, I tend to go for a four meter black background. I'm not sure if you can get a vision up there, um, but just, um, there's a few colors that are available in, in the four meter width and black and white would both be ones that I would have up in studio uh, all, all the time. They don't get replaced very often, which, which is good because they're quite expensive, yeah? Um, but then the three meter backdrops, things like the gray behind me, I always want like a 18%, 20% or mid gray to kind of have uh, as a kind of a solid. This is really good for the likes of black and white photography, um, especially when I'm doing the editorial like you see in here. Uh, basically, I can swap it quickly from a white background to the gray background and get a, a whole different kind of look and feel without it having to change everything else. Then to another side, and you might decide not to actually uh, hang more colored backgrounds up. Yeah, you might actually go for them uh, kind of being put onto their background supports all the time. But I've got three backgrounds just over on the side, which gives me a quick kind of change uh, um, uh, between them and things really. So what are we looking at in cost? As said, uh, as far as the stand is concerned, anything from about 500 quid to about two and a half grand. We're looking at the four heads, so the ELC heads, you're not gonna get much change out of around about two and a half grand for four heads. When you're looking at the D-Lite ones, of course, you're getting a kit of two lights, two stands, small soft boxes, blah, 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 for about 500 quid anyway, kind of with it. So a lighting investment, somewhere between about two and a half grand to three and a half grand, probably what you're gonna be going into. And remember, those lights are gonna last you for a very, very long time, a bit like the soft boxes you're gonna buy. If budget is budget, then obviously buy what you can afford to begin with, but avoid from buying cheap Chinese kind of uh, um, unacceptable, unreliable equipment. You want it to fire every single time in the guaranteed exposure that you kind of set, set it to. That's why I love the likes of the Ellencroms is because they're pretty much guaranteed to give out the perfect exposure that you set time and time and time again. 
look at uh, things like C stands or dolly stands, you're looking anywhere between about 100 and 200 pound a stand. A C stand is basically something that uh, often they're polished chrome. I've got no idea why. Um, anyway, because uh, you have to matte black them all down all the time to kind of stop them being in reflection. Uh, but they'll kind of um, go from a, a kind of a foot stand like that and then a column. And basically when you undo the feet, um, it basically gives you the tripod styling with a kind of a width. Uh, but then they're good for as far as the kind of the boom stands is concerned. You often see those in commercial stu studios. Um, but again, um, a, a big stand, a, where's it here? Uh, the kind of the big three column stands like we're seeing. Yeah, um, these will allow you to pretty much then um, kind of add a boom arm style on onto the top and the only thing you then need to do is kind of have a count a counterweight and you'll see these on the end of uh, kind of the poly stands or the dolly stands uh, when when they need to actually balance themselves out out with stands like that you're probably looking at around about 200 pound a pop when they're a solid one once more remember you're going to invest invest forever just because a lighting kit comes with a series of stands they usually stands designed to be portable than kind of set in a studio environment uh, for kind of heavy weights and everything else with it but saying that you know some of the stands you'll use forever and not really worried about but we definitely want at least one three or four even a five column commercial stands so it'll be thicker uh, to actually take all the weight and things like the Manfrotto stands even come with a uh, uh, kind of a guarantee of being able to take a pound weight a weightage that's why they're often used in the likes of the film world for insurance pur purposes and so on you can imagine how much weight they're kind of being supported on and things really soft boxes uh Elinchrom, rotoluxes you're looking anything from about a 200 pound to about a 600 pound kind of level some are a little bit more expensive than that if you're investing into a little bit more of kind of um a different i'm not sure if it shows on the other side as well these are just uh, photics boxes um and they're cheapest chips these are um they're about 100 quid 150 quid depends on the size, depends on the finish, and that includes the actual egg crates that kind of come with them. All have two layers of diffusion and so on. Um, background wise and things really, you're looking probably between 30, 35 pound for a roll of pay, a paper, up to about 70, depends on the different brands and everything else with it. If you've got to have a color swatch for a client, make sure that you use the likes of the Colorama swatch books. You send it off to a client so they can choose the exact color and remember to bill every background to that client, no matter what, even if they don't use it. Because some of them say, oh, can we have this one? But we'll like to look at that one on the day. And as long as they're aware they're being billed for both backgrounds, whether they're used or not, it's no big deal. And that's gonna go on the invoice no matter what. Um, probably the cheapest things to invest into though are the likes of the, um, Reflector flats. Um, these are just polystyrene, uh, polystyrene boards. This one, for instance, 20 quid. We paint the one side black, the other side white, and pretty much you're ready to rock. The cycle stands that we use to actually support them, uh, they're looking around about anywhere from about eight, eight quid to about 25 pounds and things really. Don't think I've missed out on giving any costs, have I? I think that's pretty much it, you know? So I know it's a bit of an investment, but we're talking about commercial photography, which means that you're gonna be paid for your services, but you might all also be able to actually charge for some of the equipment that you use and as well and things. So hope you've enjoyed this film. I'll see you in the next. Cheers, take care.